Hello everyone! Happy Tuesday and happy So What Day. Thanks for joining me here this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you're watching from. This is So What with Sulky, and I am Ellen March, Content Director for Sulky of America. Today we are welcoming in October, and that means a couple of different things. First off, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so we're going to talk a little bit about that this morning. And then we're going to dive into a quick and easy Halloween costume that you can make in no time for someone of any age. Um, it's quick and easy, like I mentioned, and super fun to personalize in different ways. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Be sure to add your questions and comments. Um, let us know where you're watching from, where you're from in the comment section and um, right below here on Facebook or YouTube, depending on where you're watching from. Because if you are engaging with the post today, meaning you are sharing it, you are uh, asking your questions and leaving your comments, giving me those great emojis, thumbs up, hearts, all kinds of fun things. As long as you're doing that, you are automatically eligible to win today's little gifty from Sulky. And that is our Haunting Halloween Thread Palette. This is a collection of six spools of Sulky 50 weight cotton thread, which is kind of like our go-to all-purpose thread, really, but it's great for piecing, great for quilting when you want a subtle quilted look so that your thread kind of blends in with your fabric a little bit. And I like to use it for so many projects. We're actually gonna be using some of it today in the tutorial. So this is our giveaway for one lucky viewer who is engaging and commenting and sharing out the post today. I will pick one of you at random to win this beautiful thread palette. So yay, yay for giveaways and thank you to Sulky of America for providing our giveaway today. All right, so as I mentioned, October is uh, breast cancer awareness month. So I'm curious to know how many of you out there are breast cancer survivors? How many of you out there are undergoing treatment currently? Um, how many of you are caregivers to a cancer patient or cancer survivor? Because, um, you know, it's, it's just as sort of difficult. I don't know what other word to use. Um, to be a caregiver as it is to be a patient sometimes. Um, I know firsthand because I am a breast cancer survivor and I'm going on year seven now of, um, I guess it's my seventh year or six years cancer free. Um, so I was diagnosed seven years ago and um, you know, my heart just goes out to anybody out there who gets that diagnosis of guess what? It is cancer. Um, there's really nothing like hearing those words in your life. Um, so here at Sulky, we have quite a few thread packs in our Beat Cancer Shop. I linked directly to our Beat Cancer Shop in the description of today's post, so you can head on over there and check them out. We have a lot of our different thread types and weights um, packaged into some assortments. And 10% of the proceeds for these thread packs that are in the Beat Cancer Shop go directly to um, fighting breast cancer. So they will go to the uh, Breast Cancer Foundation. And uh, here is a sampling of what you will find there. So this is our rayon uh, thread palette assortment. And you can see you can use these great colors to stitch out our Fight Like a Girl um, embroidery collection. And this is really great for tote bags. You know, I will say I've had a number of people since my diagnosis and even before, um, reach out to me to say that they were newly diagnosed. Um, and especially after you've gone through it, um, you just have a perspective that's totally different from, uh, somebody who may have not heard those words before. And, you know, breast cancer affects a third of all women, a third. 
I, it's just crazy to me. Um, but at any rate, I like to make a care package for uh, my friends or people who reach out to me and say that they're diagnosed because there were some things that really helped me during my treatment. First off, the care and support of so many people, even even just people within the sewing industry. It was absolutely amazing, the outpouring of support and love that I received. And so I really like to pass that on as well. But I like to make a little care package and a great big tote bag is really great for taking to treatment. You can have it by the door. It can have all of your essentials that you're going to need for that day when you're having an infusion or, you know, some sort of scan or something. You can put one of your favorite books inside. You could put a hand sewing project inside. Um, I always like to include a pack of thank you notes um, because, you know, when you're a patient, you have so many people on your care team and you're, you're so distracted by what's going on with your own body that sometimes we kind of forget to give those thank you notes. And, and the, the people taking care of us really, really appreciate just a little handwritten note. Um, you know, they're, they put their hearts on the lines uh, for these patients as well. So I like to include a pack of fun thank you cards. Um, and it also gives you something to do while you're going through treatment. Um, write out a couple of cards um, while, you know, you're at the doctor's office or um, at the treatment center. So I like to include that, maybe a fun pen as well to go along with them, just so that everything is in the tote, right? Um, I like to include a, a nice good water bottle because these hospitals and treatment centers have the good ice. Does everyone know the good ice? <laughs> I think it's the little pebbly ice and I absolutely love it. And so every time I would go for treatment, I would fill up like two big water jugs of the good ice so that I could take some home with me and have it for a little while. So um, a water bottle is good. Maybe one of those ones that's like aluminum on the inside. So it really holds that good ice for a good while. Um, and you could personalize it with a design. You could personalize it with a monogram, um, all kinds of things. And you will find this rayon six pack in the Beat Cancer Shop. And we also have some handwork threads uh, in the Beat Cancer Shop as well. So if you do want to compile a little hand sewing project for a friend who might be undergoing treatment or even a caregiver, you can grab up one of these six packs. Like I said, 10% of the proceeds are going to go to the Breast Cancer um, Foundation. And uh, you can print a design onto Sulky Stick and Stitch, put a little scrap fabric, maybe even with a wooden embroidery hoop with it. And it kind of keeps your hands busy, gives you something to do. Um, whether you are uh, traveling with somebody, taking them to their treatment, or if you are undergoing treatment yourself, it's always a great idea to have something to occupy your mind and keep your hands busy. So a little hand sewing project, it doesn't need to be an elaborate thing. Um, you know, again, a monogram, a quick design, maybe something for the upcoming holidays so that, you know, you can get a leg up on an, a little ornament project or something like this. So this is another six pack that is available already um, packaged up as an assortment at the Beat Cancer Shop. Here's another design um, that you get with purchase of some of the handwork threads that are available in that shop. This is a really pretty heart with, uh, you know, a floral design inside. You can print that out, like I said, onto stick and stitch and just slap it right on a piece of fabric that you have in your stash, include those threads and some hand sewing needles, and that's all you need to have a little project on the go to maybe wrap up in a plastic bag or a zip top bag and include it with your tote if you are um, gifting a care package to someone. We also have these really cute decorative pins. These have little pink ribbons at the top of the pins. You can use them, you know, for any kind of sewing project. Um, I actually, last year I made a kind of traveling sewing kit in a mason jar and the top of the mason jar is a little pin cushion. So all you do is basically create like a fabric yo-yo 
and stuff it with your stuffing of choice. And then you put that on the top of the mason jar and you can stick some of these cute decorative pins in it. And then inside the jar can be your little sewing kit, a few spools of thread, your fabric with your stick and stitch pattern on it, and the hand sewing needles can be inside the jar. So that's a really cute idea as well. You can also grab up a needle minder and maybe add that to the gift inside the little jar. We have a lot of really cute needle minders at sulky.com. So that would be a cute little addition. And, you know, you don't have to gift somebody all 75 pins. You can create a bunch of different sewing kits. Maybe even if you want to um, contact a local treatment center or hospital and say, can I donate some little sewing kits to some patients? Because I got to tell you, when I was going through treatment, I was gifted a bunch of things by just anonymous donors. So when I arrived for my first treatment, there was a basket of uh, crocheted hats and scarves. And they said, pick out one or two things. These are donated from, um, you know, local artisans and, and crafters. And that's just a really cool thing when, when you're starting off, you don't know what to expect. You're really scared going into it and you get a little gift. So that would be a really cute idea. You know, you could grab up some inexpensive zipper pouches from Amazon or the dollar store and fill them with a couple of thread spools, maybe some of these decorative head pins, a piece of fabric from your stash and a little design on it. And that, you know, as I mentioned, keep somebody's hands busy, even if they don't really know how to sew. Um, hand sewing is so easy to start. You know, you don't need a huge investment. A couple of spools of 12 weight cotton petite thread, a little design. You could even make a, you know, type up a little instruction card to put in with your sewing kits. You know, here's how to get started with a back stitch or a running stitch and include, you know, a little hoop and they can turn that into an ornament or something like that. Um, that, that would be just a really cool thing to donate to, like I said, a hospital or treatment center. Here's what the little pins look like outside of that box. They're just so cute. All right, so that those are my ideas for breast cancer awareness so far, but throughout the month, um, you know, and we should be thinking about breast cancer patients all year round, but it is good to have a month where we kind of make a big acknowledgement. You know, it reminds everybody, hey, when was my last mammogram? Let me make sure I'm up to date on all of that. As we all know, catching this stuff as early as possible is super important. You know, catch it while it's small so you can get a handle on it. Um, but there have been such advancements in breast cancer treatment because we are making people more and more aware of it. Um, you know, I say we, but I mean the doctors, the nurses, the caregivers, the innovators out there. Um, making these new drugs and uh, clinical trials and all of that good stuff. So I applaud anyone. My dog even wants to get in on the action. <laughs> She's making herself known right now. But I applaud anybody who is currently going through treatment. You can do this. You got this. Um, I also applaud any of you who are out there who have survived and are plugging along. And it's it's... It's very, very important. All right. Joan says, I have sewn several items for our local breast cancer shop. That is fantastic. Kristen says, I work for Gentech or Genentech and the developments are amazing. Sorry, my dog is getting really, I don't know if you can hear her, but somebody must be at the door. I'm just going to shut my door here. Okay. Poor girl. Okay, lots of you in the comments talking about some other ways you can get involved with donating to breast cancer patients, um, making little pillows for surgery and things like that. I was gifted um, some pillows that kind of go under your armpits after you have a mastectomy. Um, really simple, easy things to do um, to brighten somebody's day and make it just a little bit easier on them. So many variations of pink. Exactly. 
So check out the Beat Cancer Shop. Um, you will see as soon as you head on over to that homepage uh, where the 10% of profits or of proceeds go uh, when you purchase something from that shop. Um, so really, really cool idea from Sulky for doing that. All right, so let's kind of switch gears and talk about some Halloween. Who is ready for Halloween out there? You know, it seems we are getting ready for these holidays earlier and earlier every year. Or am I just imagining it? I feel like Halloween was hitting the stores um, in the middle of summer. I just, you know, it's hard to think about Halloween then. But I like to think about Halloween all year round because it is so fun to decorate for Halloween. You can do really outlandish things and get out the glitter and sparkle and metallic threads, the glowy, the reflective, all the fun special effects are so great for Halloween. And then as we transition into the holiday season, we can take elements of all those pretty sparkly things and kind of incorporate those into our holiday makes as well. So Kathy says she is ready. Her inflatable is already up in the front window. Debbie is already ready for Halloween. Fantastic. All right. So I am going to show off a fun little costume that I put together. And um, I thought I would have it right next to me. Let me just grab it. So with my kids and our neighborhood, um, we have started doing a trunk or treat at my kids' school. And it's really fun. We have food trucks and there's a trunk or treat and there's a pumpkin contest. And it's just a really fun community building event. And we have asked, or they have asked, that the parents also dress up for the trunk or treat. I know. So last year, <laughs> I found a sweatshirt and I just put um, applique bones on it. Super easy. I was the easiest skeleton. It's all about easiness for me um, because I'm not going to go all out and spend $500 on a costume that I'm going to wear for one night. Although I do love me some Halloween. So I have been known to spend a little bit too much money on fabrics and things of that nature, but we will talk about our support group for that in a little while. But anyways, this year I really got inspired by the fabrics at the fabric store that they were putting out in the cosplay section. And so I found this really great stretchy red fabric with these metallic stars on it. And I was like, what am I making with this? Uh, because I must have it. So I decided that it looks like a really great superwoman costume. Um, so I thought that I'm going to use that for my inspiration. Then I found this great gold stretchy fabric uh, to kind of pair with it. And I thought I could make a cape with this and it could be reversible. So I kind of get two costumes in one. Maybe one year I am Superwoman um, or Wonder Woman. And another year or one year I'm Superwoman, one year I'm Wonder Woman. Is there enough differentiation there? Anyway, um, I thought I would just make a cape and then I could pull together the rest of the costume relatively easy, easily. I mean, I could really just wear a red shirt and blue shorts or blue pants or even jeans and kind of get away with this as a costume. And then I'm going to take the leftover fabric and just make a quick eye mask and boom, I've dressed up but I didn't have to go super all out, right? But I'm still in the spirit um, and all that good stuff. So then I got to thinking, if I'm going to be Supergirl, I need a monogram or I need like a Supergirl, Superman um, emblem, right? On my cape. So I've got the Super E. I know, right? Okay, so I'm going to go through how I made this. I didn't use a pattern at all. I'm going to show you how easy it is. You can make it for an adult size. You can make it for a kid size. You could probably even make this for your pet. I don't know how it would, you know, tie it onto their collar or something. 
they may trip over it, but it'll be a great photo op. All right, so my point is that you can make this really any size and it's gonna look great and it's gonna be quick and easy. All right, so here is our supplies. Like I mentioned, I found super, super stretchy fabric, but you could really make this out of a woven fabric. Um, it's not gonna have the same drape to it, so it really depends on how um, uh, authentic or how flowy you want your cape to be. So I have made a superhero cape in the same way for my son years and years ago. And I um, did an applique of his uh, first name on the back of the cape. It wasn't even for Halloween. It was just for like daily dress up for, you know, a three-year-old. And he absolutely loved it. I made it out of quilting cotton, no big, it was totally fine. So it just really depends. If you find a fabric that you absolutely love, and maybe the Halloween type cosplay fabrics are on sale right now, um, because they are on the pricier side, you know, these fun uh, fabrics uh, that have this great stretchability and um, to them, uh, they can be on the more expensive side of things. So you could certainly pare it down, grab up some cotton fabric, um, and create a cape that's just as fine, right? Um, and then add some metallic threads and stuff like that to it to give it that sparkle and, you know, the embellishment and the fun to it. All right, so you need two fabrics, one for the outer, one for the lining. Like I mentioned, this is going to be reversible. So maybe if you're making a Superman cape, you can find a Superman fabric, um, a licensed fabric in the cottons. Then you'll pair it with maybe a solid cotton fabric on the other side. And you can make your applique out of the Superman fabric or out of one of these glitter sheets. So in my picture here, I have a sheet of red glitter sticker sheet that you would use for a cutting machine. And I don't have a cutting machine. I wish I did have a cutting machine. So if you have a cutting machine, you could certainly just cut out um, a, an applique of your choice. You can either scan one in if you have a scan and cut machine, or you can find one in the library uh, with your cutting machine and cut out a really cool looking phrase, monogram, applique, what have you. I used a sticker sheet because these fabrics, you can't really fuse onto these fabrics. They would melt. So I used a sticker sheet so that I could just stick it onto my outer fabric. And if I don't sew around it, which I didn't, I can actually remove this if I want to. It is stuck on here so well. And as you can see, it moves with the fabric really well too. It's not super stiff but I could still remove it after Halloween if I wanted to. Let's say I want to pass this costume on to my son next year and he's going to be a wizard or something like that. I can just peel off this sticker and he's got a costume for next year. So really cool. And I'm going to show you how to use this without a cutting machine because I don't have one. But again, if you have one, you could certainly use a cutting machine and do your applique lickety split. We also need some needles, of course. I used a Microtex needle. These needles have a super sharp, very fine point to them. So they're really great for these like lame type fabrics. I should have paid more attention to the bolts of this fabric um, so I could tell you exactly what it was, but I was just so excited when I got it cut and I just wasn't even paying attention. So I, I, I apologize for that. I was kind of like squirrel in the Halloween aisle, like here, 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 here. I want all of it. <laughs> so I apologize for that. But you could also use, since this is a very stretchy fabric, you could also use a super stretch needle, an organ super stretch needle. That's going to have a little bit of a ball point to it, though. And I went with the Microtex pointy point uh, because my gold fabric is more stable than my really stretchy red fabric, okay? And so I 
didn't want that ballpoint needle to make too big of a hole in this gold fabric uh, because then my thread is going to kind of be able to move around in that hole. The chances of it failing over time, if I'm washing it a lot, things like that are a little bit greater because I've kind of perforated the fabric a little bit too much with the needle. Hopefully that makes sense. You're also going to need some thread, obviously. And I used a couple of spools of Sulky Poly Sparkle Thread because, again, we're going with sparkly fabric. Why not pair it with sparkly thread? So for the gold side, I used a gold Poly Sparkle Thread. And then for the red side, I used a red Poly Sparkle Thread. I actually put one in the bobbin and the other one in the needle so that when I was top stitching, I had the gold thread on top and the red thread on the, bot on the bottom. So you just need to be aware of which fabric you are sewing from in your reversible cape to make sure you have the correct thread color in the needle and the correct thread color in the bobbin. Since Poly Sparkle is a 30 weight thread, we need a size 9014 needle uh, to accommodate the thread thickness. Also, you could use a 50 weight cotton thread if you are going to create your cape using a woven fabric or, well, a woven fabric like a quilting cotton. Then I would recommend using that 50 weight cotton thread. Um, you could probably get away with using the poly sparkle on the cotton thread though. Um, I'm sure it would be strong enough for the construction. And if you wanted to tack down your applique, let's say you're going to do like a, a raw edge applique out of fabric rather than using the um, glitter sticker sheet. If you want to just cut this out of fabric um, and it, it would be a raw edge applique, you'll want to stitch on the inside of your applique piece and you could use the 30 weight poly sparkle for that and add a little bit of bling. All right. So that's about the supplies. And this entire tutorial is on the Sulky blog. So you don't have to write anything down or worry about missing something that I'm saying. You can head on over to blog.sulky.com. I put a link to that post in the description of today's live stream. So if you're not seeing the entire description with all the links, remember to hit that little see more button and then the entire description will pop out and you can click right on over to the blog post and get the entire, um, all the instructions. So first things first, you need to figure out what kind of monogram or motif or applique you wanna add to your cape. Now, mine is quite large because I made this for an adult. I mean, the applique is almost as big as my head. Um, I just sized it on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And sometimes these glitter sheets that you would use in a cutting machine, they'll come on a roll or they might even come in a pre-made sheet as well. Um, so it's just kind of what you can find in the craft section of your fabric store or your um, craft store, wherever you find these sheets. Um, but look for the cutting machines and you can find them there. Um, I just thought it was such a good thing to use for this fabric since we can't do fusible applique on this fabric. Um, I just thought creating a sticker would be so quick and easy, and it really was. So if you're going to use a cutting machine, just follow the instructions for your cutting machine. Um, like I said, either scan in um, and ha a hand-drawn uh, motif like mine. I just kind of looked at the Superman logo and just freehand uh, drew an E inside of that little Superman diamond rather than an S. And then once I kind of had it to my liking, I did a final trace using my uh, wafer light box. We have those at sulky.com. I did a final trace for the outline and then I used that as my pattern. Then it's a matter of just cutting your circle out of this sticker paper. And I found the best tool for the job was this little Olfa craft knife. Um, it's like a retractable um, X-Acto knife kind of thing, um, but it's 
the Ulfa brand who makes, you know, sewing scissors and whatnot. If you got a Sulky Fall mystery box, you got one of these Ulfa touch knives. And I absolutely love them. I have about three of them in various places in my sewing room. I use them to cut out buttonholes. I use them for um, constructing purses out of faux leather when you need to insert a purse foot or um, a magnetic snap. They are so awesome for that because you just need, you know, those little markings cut open. And sometimes if you're using a seam ripper for that, um, it can go a little bit beyond your line accidentally. These are just really easy to use and better to control. So if you did get this in your mystery box, yay. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you can head on over to sulky.com. I think we have a very limited stock of mystery boxes left for our fall mystery box. So now you know there's an Ulfa touch knife inside of all the boxes. So you may get other things. Um, you know, boxes could vary, but there's an Ulfa touch knife in each one of those boxes. So this is a really great use for that tool um, because it slices through this sticker paper really easily. And like I said, I wasn't using a cutting machine for this and I didn't want to use scissors because of all those little corners and points that I really needed to get exact. And I thought if I used scissors, even the sharpest pointiest scissors that I have, I probably was going to mess up the sticker sheet. Okay. <laughs> so I use the Ulfa touch knife and I actually protected my cutting surface a little bit more. I have one of those flimsy dollar store uh, cutting boards and I will put that over my, um, my regular, you know, rotary cutting mat four times like this because I just don't trust that my self-healing mat is going to actually heal if I'm using a knife you know, a little blade like this. That's way sharper than a rotary cutter. So just to protect things, I slid my cheapo dollar store cutting mat underneath so that that could get totally destroyed. Um, and I use it for all kinds of things. If I'm inserting snaps or like a grommet and I need to use a hammer, I will put that over the top of a wood block. Um, it kind of absorbs the shock of hitting it and it just gives you a little bit something else um, to mess up and you don't really care because it was a dollar. So I just wanted to make sure and mention that because this picture does show uh, that craft knife over the top of my self-healing mat and underneath that what you don't see is one of those clear cheapo cutting cutting boards, okay, just so that you know. All right, so cut out all of those negative spaces in your motif. Um, and I also wanted to try using the Sulky Sticky Plus slitting pen just to see how it would perform along the lines. If you could use that and maybe it wouldn't perforate the paper underneath. Now we're making a sticker here, so it doesn't really matter if we perforate it or not. We're not gonna be applying this to something like glass because um, there's a lot of different things you can do with these sticker sheets. Um, but at any rate, we're creating a sticker so we can just cut away that paper backing. But in some instances, you would want to leave the paper backing so that you could apply it different ways and if you have a cutting machine, you, you're probably aware of all those different ways or you can Google it and check it out. But at any rate, I wanted to see how the Sticky Plus slitting pen would work. This is the pen that we use when we're doing hoopless embroidery and we are working with a, an adhesive backed tearaway stabilizer um, so that we can stick our fabric to it. And if you are a veteran watcher of So What, you are very aware that this is one of my favorite sewing tools <laughs> at sulky.com. Um, so this has a very sharp point to it, as you can see in the picture I have on the screen there. So I thought, let's try that and see if it performs just as well as the Ulfa touch knife. And 
it did a pretty good job, but you can see um, in this image, I, I used it around that little triangle at the bottom. And you can see it kind of gave a little bit shaggier result along the edge. So I had to go in and clean that up with my scissors a little bit. So it wasn't as accurate as I wanted it to be. That touch knife really does wonders, but you can also simply try using a very sharp pair of scissors and just not going beyond any of those points and you'll probably get a great result as well. Okay. So after you cut along all those lines or perforate those lines, you're just going to remove the negative spaces and you will be left with your motif sticker. And it's just that simple. So here is my sticker coming along. I left it on that paper backing just until I was absolutely ready to use it. Um, so it's just a great idea to just remove all the excess and then you have your sticker on that paper backing just ready and waiting. Now, if you have cut away the paper backing in those negative spaces, that's okay too. It's just a little bit harder to kind of maneuver and, and remove your sticker um, or remove the, the backing from the little portions left over in your motif. So keep that in mind too when you're figuring out a motif to put on your cape. Um, Simpler is going to be better here, uh, just so that you don't have tiny little pieces that you're removing in certain areas. You know, keep it simple. It'll still be uh, dramatic and a really cool finish. And again, find that glittery stuff. Can you guys see how glittery and shimmery the actual sticker is? It's hard to see it in the lights, um, but it's another cool metallic y shimmery effect. So now we get to start creating the cape itself. And like I said, I didn't use a pattern. I just started marking right onto the fabric wrong side. So I started with the gold fabric because it was a little bit more stable than my stretchy red fabric. And I just folded it in half uh, with right sides facing so that I had, I could work with just half the pattern cut it out and I would have my whole cape shape. So first off, I found a round object and this is actually the lid of a trash can that I have. And I kind of measured um, how large I wanted the curve to be on the cape and I just eyeballed it really honestly using um, that round object. So you could use a plate, if you're making a kid's cape, you could use something smaller like an old DVD or CD, um, just anything that's round. Um, and you can kind of eyeball that measurement too, that um, half measurement. You know, if you want to start from about here and go to your upper shoulder, add some seam allowance, you have a pretty good idea of how long that curve needs to be. And then you can adjust your circle on the corner of your fabric uh, to make sure that it's long enough. But again, this is stretchy. You're going to add ties to it so that it, you know, attaches around the front of you. So it's super forgiving. You do not need to be exact with this measurement at all. And Mary Lou is saying, oh my gosh, this is so easy. And it really, really is. Don't take it too seriously. Even if this is uh, smaller than you want it to be and your cape is hitting back here, your ties are going to bring it to the front. And so as long as it's going out far enough so that you have a nice drape and swing to it, it's going to be totally fine. So curve along that upper edge and just mark it with a fabric marker of your choice. Make sure you're marking on the wrong side. It's just good practice. Then what I did... I got a long piece of string. You could use a piece of ribbon for this if you have one in your stash, even a strip of, of selvage that's cut off of some fabric yardage. Tie one end around a pencil or your fabric marker. And then you're gonna take the opposite end and place it along your upper edge mark where you marked that curve. 
and you're going to swing your pencil or marking pen around to create that bottom curved shape of your cape. It's it's kind of like creating a big protractor. So now we have the bottom curve kind of sort of matching the curve along that upper edge of the cape. And then just decide how far out you want your cape to swing. You can go right to the fabric edge if you want and make it, you know, super swingy. Um, or you can come in a little bit closer. And another thing to think about is these specialty fabrics are often about 54 or 60 inches wide. Um, so you might be getting a lot more yardage. Um, so if you are making this for a kid, you could probably cut the yardage in half that I used, and that's listed in uh, the blog post as well. All right, so we're going to swing out the pencil, create our lower edge curve, and then we're going to um, mark about an inch or two inches from our curve mark along the upper edge and angle another line going down. Now that's the side edge of our cape. And now we have our cape pattern plotted onto the fabric. And then you will just cut it out. So you can see I have my curve. Then I have about an inch or two inches over from that curve because that's where we're going to attach our strap or our, you know, our tie. So we want a, a flat edge there and not a point. Okay. So you're going to have your upper edge curve over about an inch or two then down to the lower edge curve and across. It, it couldn't be simpler. Now, this makes a really swingy, full cape. So like I said, if you want to work with a little bit less yardage, you're still going to have a really cool, awesome cape. You don't have to kick it out as far as I did. Totally flexible. You could also kick it out that far and then kind of audition it on yourself and always trim a little bit away if you think it's gone a little too far. All right. I think the swingier the better, but it's up to you. <laughs> so now we have our outer cape and we need our lining cape. But first we're going to add that sticker that we created. So I made quite a harsh fold line down the center of my cape so that I could measure where that sticker is going to go. But again, this is very sensitive fabric, okay? So it's a little hard to press out that wrinkle. Now I will say that washing it when you're done and even before you start working on it just to get rid of any sizing or whatnot takes that wrinkle away and then you can kind of line dry it or you might have to check your uh, washing instructions on the bolt. Some of these fabrics even say dry, dry clean only. Don't buy those fabrics, just saying. <laughs> we want to be able to wash this, especially if you're making it for a kid. They are going to want to wear it all the time, not just Halloween night. They could be traipsing through the mud and dirt and snow and whatnot in the upcoming months with it. So you want it to be washable. So make sure you check out the care instructions on the fabric that you're buying. So now we're just going to measure down from the upper edge of our cape about five inches, four or five inches, so that it's kind of right in the center of your back in between your shoulder blades when you're wearing it. Again, if you're doing this for a kid, you could have them kind of hold the cape and you can eyeball where that motif could go or just do about three inches or so instead of five inches. So you will place your sticker that you made and just literally stick it down. Now, if you want, you can add stitches to your sticker now uh, because you can sew right through it and you can applique it on. You can add decorative stitches. You can use the sulky cry reflective thread and outline your motif in the reflective thread. And then when your little ones are out trick or treating, they are reflective. You could even use that thread for all the top stitching on the cape as well. And that would be really cool and a safety precaution for Halloween night. So like I mentioned, if you are going to do a raw edge applique instead of this sticker method, you would definitely want to stitch your applique down because you haven't made it into a sticker 
And if you're using a fabric like this, you won't be able to fuse your applique down. So you need to add some stitches to it. And even if you're using a quilting cotton fabric, that you can, you know, obviously use the Sulky Perfect Applique Fusible Web, but you would also want to add some stitches to it as well. For my cape, I did not add any stitches so that it's super versatile. And again, if my son or daughter wants to wear it next Halloween and kind of transform this into something and make it their own, I can just remove that sticker and I've got a costume that lasts, you know, for multiple Halloweens. So now we're going to use that outer cape as our pattern to cut out our lining cape. So we don't have to do any of those markings again. We are just going to fold our lining in half right sides together, place half of our outer cape on top and just use it as a pattern and cut out our lining cape. Super easy. Also from the lining fabric, is what we're going to use for our ties. So all I did was create two fabric tubes from the leftover fabric yardage. And you will just fold your tubes in half, right sides together, sew down one long edge. Now this is my stretchier fabric, so I chose a stretch stitch on the sewing machine. If you don't have a stretch stitch, you can choose a zigzag stitch that's a little bit longer and narrower than the standard setting, and you'll get the same effect. The reason we are using that stitch is so that when our tie stretches, the stitches stretch with it. If you were to sew this seam with a straight stitch, as soon as you go to stretch it, those stitches are gonna pop, and there goes your seam. Okay. All right. So we're making our fabric tubes and then we've got to turn them right side out. I like to use a knitting needle for turning these small tubes. It's super, super easy. Um, you might have a method that you enjoy. I know some people will sew a length of ribbon inside of the tube and anchor it with some stitches along that short end. And then when they are done sewing it, they just start pulling the ribbon and the tube comes out. Then you can just snip off the part that you tacked to the ribbon and you have your completed fabric tube. So different ways of looking at making the fabric tubes. Since this fabric is such a stretchy kind of knit variety, you can just knot the end. If you are not using something that isn't going to fray like a quilting cotton, then you can sew the that end before you sew your long edge on your fabric tube. And then when you turn it right side out, the end will be finished. Your raw edges will be tucked inside and it'll be neatly sewn. So your choice. But I decided just to knot the ends of the fabric tubes, keeping it quick and easy and simple. The other end of the fabric tube, you see how I've centered that long edge seam along uh, the center back of the tube? So now I'm going to put that tube right sides facing my outer cape along that upper edge where we added the additional inch or inch and a half or so beyond our curve. That's where we're going to center our fabric tube. So center that and then we're going to baste it in place on the sewing machine. So now we're going to repeat for the opposite side of the cape so that we have a fabric tube attached at both upper edges. Then you're gonna place those tubes facing the cape so that they're out of the way of the stitching and put your lining right side facing your outer cape so our tube is sandwiched in between those two fabric layers. And I used a Clover Wonder Clip. We have these at sulky.com. I was amazed to hear that a couple of you said you had never used Wonder Clips before when we were talking last week. Crazy! You will love these little notions. We have them at sulky.com in this small version. You see how this one has 
a point to it. This is great for corners and mitering quilts. We also have them in the standard size, which has those straight ends, which are great for this particular application because that clip holds the entire width of the strap. So it really holds it in place nice. And the reason I don't use a pin here or anywhere on this project is because a pin could snag these fabrics. It could snag it or create a permanent hole. So instead of pins, I used these Clover Wonder Clips for the entirety of uh, the construction. So now that we've clipped our um, ties in place on both sides of the cape, we are going to sew the entire perimeter. And I also used a very narrow, long stretch stitch for uh, sewing the perimeter of the cape. Keep in mind, you need to open this and turn it right side out. So along that lower edge or one of the straight sides, you need to make sure you have an opening so that you can turn this right side out. And then we'll just whip stitch that opening shut um, after turning it right side out before we do the top stitching. Another thing we wanna do before we turn it right side out is snip into that upper edge curve a little bit before we turn it right side out. That's just gonna give you a nice curve um, that doesn't have um, any excess fabric going into it. So those, those curves or those snips allow you to have a nice smooth curve when you turn it right side out. And then we get to top stitch it. So here is where I used the 30 weight poly sparkle thread and I used the gold in the needle and the red poly sparkle in the bobbin so that my thread on top matched that gold fabric on top and the thread in the bobbin matched that red thread in the lining side. So just be aware of which fabric you are sewing from because you could really top stitch from the lining side or the outer side because again, this is totally reversible. And you can see I have that Clover Wonder Clip in place and you might wanna clip on either side of your opening um, or you can just whip stitch it shut and when you top stitch it, that'll give it even more reinforcement, making sure everything's nice and closed and you have no raw edges. And then it's ready to go. Look at me, I'm wearing that cape on my deck. <laughs> so now I need the rest of the costume. So if anybody has any tips, um, but I also have leftover red fabric. So I was thinking again, I'm gonna make like a mask that'll tie around my uh, head and hair. And honestly, I think I'm just gonna wear a red shirt and maybe even some jeans. And I'm just gonna rock the cape and that's gonna be my costume. So, <laughs> and yes, my kids also want to wear it. So um, hopefully we'll get a lot of use out of this guy. And then here you could see that there's the red side uh, with the stars. So I can be Superwoman or Supergirl with the gold side and my sticker motif or I can be Wonder Woman with the red side and wear a totally different costume um, with it. So lots of uses for this. And this red side that has the stars, you could easily make into a wizard costume, um, maybe even with a wizard hat and some other props. So lots of different things we can do with the cape idea. And yeah, you can make this for anyone of any size, I would love to see a little doggy cape, but you really have to make sure that you tie it around a collar or something so there's no choking going on, stuff like that. <laughs> all right, so I hope you're all inspired to make some capes. Um, and again, these are really fun any time of year, um, especially if you have little grandkids or little, little kids, you know, age like two to five, they wanna wear a cape any day any day of the year, go to the grocery store, let me get my cape, okay? It's the cutest thing. You can find fabrics, licensed fabrics for characters that they love. It doesn't even have to be a superhero cape. It can just be a fun cape, you know? You could make this out of a satin with a tool on one side and make like a princessy type cape. It does not have to be for a specific character, but super fun if you personalize it in some way. 
You could even do a machine embroidery monogram or emblem or motif, especially if you're working with those quilting cotton fabrics. Joni has a great idea and says Velcro for pets. Use Velcro for pets. Okay, yeah, because we don't want the, the ties. I would hate for any like choking mishaps to go on. Um, or even just maybe figuring out how to add it to their collar, maybe make a casing or something along the upper edge, making that kind of straight across. That way when you put their collar on, it's kind of attached to the collar. That might work as well. Anyways, cute little photo ops. Everybody can wear a cape. They can pick out their own fabrics for the cape. It's so easy to sew. They could probably also help with the sewing. Not your pets, but the kids. All right. <laughs> So I hope you all enjoy the cape costume. I am ready to rock it. Another thing I want to share with you all is next Tuesday, October 11th at 2 p.m. Eastern time is our tinsel and trimmings table runner video cast. This is on our education platform at sewingonline.sulky.com. And I will be your main instructor for this video cast, but we also have a special guest joining us for the day. Her name is Gail Pan, and she is on an Australian embroidery, patchwork, um, and quilt designer. She is very accomplished. She has written many books. She designs fabric for Henry Glass. Um, she is just so, so talented. She created these adorable holiday-themed motifs. She's going to show you how to do them hand embroidery style, and I'm going to show you how to do them free motion style. So if handwork is not your thing, we will be doing it by machine. And if handwork is your thing, you will absolutely have a great time making these. They come together really quickly. They use one or two uh, threads, depending on the desired look. We've got two different red threads for the embroidery designs. Um, in the kit so you can use both of them for different portions of the design which is what I did when I did free motion I used the darker red thread for some of the accents uh, like the scarf on the snowman and um, the let's see the facial features of the elf I used the darker red thread for that and then the lighter red thread for the other elements of each design so it's very cute. And I know we talked about, you know, getting, you know, having holiday things in the stores earlier and earlier these days. So now I feel bad talking about something for the holidays. But when we are talking about handwork and free motion and quilting and hand quilting and all the techniques that we're going to cover during this video cast, we need time to make this thing so that we can display it on our table for the holiday season. And it does have this red work kind of vintage -y vibe going on. But the kit that we have put together for this event, let me just share with you. First off, you get the pattern, which is the tinsel and trimmings pattern by Gail Pan. This has a $14 value to it, the pattern itself. You get these three beautiful embroidery designs with it. It's hand embroidery or free motion embroidery. So before you ask, no, there are, they are not digitized for machine embroidery. But if you do want to do it by machine, make sure to register for the video cast because I'm going to show you how to do it on your machine. Okay, this pattern, you get the instructions for the beautiful table runner that we're going to demo during the event. You also get instructions for making a simpler wall hanging. So if you want to just make one of the blocks, and frame it with some beautiful fabric and hang it on your front door or um, you know anywhere in your home. You could also stuff it and make it into a pillow. Lots of different things you could do with these designs. Um, so at any rate, you get instructions for both projects within the pattern as well as those three printable embroidery designs that are exclusives from Gail Pan. Along with the pattern in the kit, you also get a special pack of Sticky Fabrisolvi, also known as Stick and Stitch Stabilizer. You will get three sheets so that you can print out each one of those designs on a sheet of the stabilizer. This is our water-soluble stabilizer that we're gonna be using to transfer the designs 
And eat, whether we're doing handwork or free motion, it's the same technique for transferring the designs. It also stabilizes the fabric during either hand embroidery or free motion embroidery. And you will learn all about it in the video cast. Along with that specialty stabilizer pack, you also get a pack of assorted universal needles because we're gonna be working with lots of different thread types and weights uh, for this project. There, there are so many things to learn and do, and we need to be able to switch from one needle size to another when we're swapping out our threads. So you'll get an assortment pack of needles that include all of the needed sizes so that you just have them at hand and you can easily swap a needle and put the other one back, so forth, while we're working our way through the table runner. And then as you can see in this image, there are six thread spools included in this kit. You will get two spools of the handwork thread, which is the 12 weight cotton petites. We're also gonna use that nice thick thread for the free motion embroidery. That's right, it's not just for handwork. We will be using it in our machine with one of the large size needles, the 116 needle, and we're gonna do the free motion using the same thread that you would use for the handwork. So I have my free motion um, in progress and you can see, um, and yes, I will finish this in time for the video cast next Tuesday. Um, but I'm pretty far along. I just need to finish up my hand quilting and get it bound. Um, and then you will all see it in its final glory next Tuesday. Um, I also have lots of step outs so that I can show you the sewing in real time. And I've prepared some videos so you can see the free motion um, and my process for it. And you will get the hang of it and it's not hard. If you're thinking, oh my gosh, free motion embroidery and free motion quilting and hand quilting and piecing and all these different techniques, we are gonna break it down so that it is not intimidating, it is not difficult. If you've never done free motion anything before, you will be able to do this. So I highly encourage you, register for the video cast, grab up a kit, along with those two spools of 12 weight cotton petites, you will also be getting two spools of poly sparkle thread. The poly sparkle is what we're gonna use for quilting the blocks. Let me get a little bit closer here so you can see. See the shimmery poly sparkle thread? That's what we're gonna use for free motion quilting. And again, don't hear that and get scared because we're gonna drop the feed dogs. I'm gonna show you how to start and stop you're gonna get the hang of it and you're gonna feel so accomplished and you're gonna love the final look. So a little bit of sparkle with the poly sparkle threads. You're also gonna get some construction thread, that 50 weight cotton thread that I was talking about earlier that is our giveaway for one lucky viewer today who is watching, commenting, engaging with today's post, all of those good things. You're gonna get a neutral color of the 50 weight cotton so you can construct the table runner with that. And then what thread am I missing? Okay, we've got the poly sparkle, we've got the cottons. I can't remember what the sixth thread is and I'm looking right at it. Ooh, it's 12 weight filane thread. Filane is our 100% acrylic thread that has this nice fuzzy furry texture to it. And that's actually what I have in progress right now because I'm doing my final bit of hand quilting. And again, when you think of hand quilting, don't think that it's something that you've gotta be super intricate and precise about. I am just doing a totally freehand wavy line across my border pieces with a simple running stitch. And I'm gonna show you just how easy it is during the video cast. So. And Jennifer is asking, do you brush it out? In this case, I'm not brushing out the thread. I'm just using one strand of it. And it's kind of complementing that sort of vintagey quality look of this table runner. You know, we've got the red work embroidery, the poly sparkle quilting, and then we have a touch of filane 
hand quilting to just finish it off. And so there's a lot of techniques, a lot of threads, and just a really beautiful end result. So that's the base kit. You will get all of these supplies as well as the pattern in the kit. We also made an optional fabric bundle kit. So if you want the fabrics that I am working with, which I absolutely love, these are brand new fabric collections. This one is from Moda. It's called Pomegranate. Isn't it beautiful? And then this one is a plaid Christmas fabric from Michael Miller. Both of these prints are from brand new collections for the holidays. And then you will also get some Kona cotton solid fabric for the embroideries. So if you want to make it exactly like this and get these great brand new Christmas fabrics, you'll also get enough of that pomegranate for the entire back of the table runner. And then we're going to use this plaid fabric to bind the entire project so that all coordinates and goes together nicely. So if you want to do the fabric bundle, you'll need to first go to the kit, put the kit in your cart, and it'll ask you, do you want to add the fabric bundle? Do you want to add some free motion quilting gloves? Do you want to add some hand work needles, etc.? So you have some options for kind of tailoring your kit to, you know, exactly what you want to see in it. So really, really cute fabric bundle. We have limited supply of those. So if you do want a fabric bundle, I highly suggest you grab up your kit a little bit early. It's not that early because we're meeting next Tuesday, but I highly suggest you grab up that fabric bundle because they are going to go fast. We do not have a whole lot. It is hard to get these brand new fabric collections um, and get them in everybody's hands uh, because they, they just they ordered the yardage so, so far in advance. Um, so if you love that fabric like I do, be sure to grab that up and go ahead and register for our tinsel and trimmings video cast. Again, this is happening next Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time over on our education site, which is sewingonline.sulky.com. I linked directly to registering for the video cast. So all you need to do is register. Just for registering, you will get a fun embroidery design from Sulky as well. It's one of our spoolie designs. And the spoolie designs are little spools of thread that are all jazzed up and made into little people uh, for different holidays and seasons. So you'll find the Merry Christmas spoolie design and you will get that absolutely free just for registering for the event. So just a little bonus uh, that you can add to your holiday makes, um, especially if you have some sewing friends or some guild members that you want to uh, create little gifts for, um, that the sewing spoolies are really fun. So you will get a Merry Christmas spoolie design just for registering. And then you'll get a couple of reminder emails so that you can click on over on the day of the event um, and make sure to join us on time. If you cannot join live at 2 p.m. Eastern, you can watch the event in its entirety anytime after the live event ends. So once it ends, it populates for a little bit onto the event page and then it will become an on-demand video. So as long as you've registered for it, you will be able to access that content, the freebies, everything on the event page and the video itself will be yours in your own personal library at sewingonline.sulky.com. So don't worry if you can't join live. Register anyway so you get your freebies and all the information. You will get the presentation as a PDF as well as a video of the entire event that you can fast forward, rewind, pause. When your kit arrives, you can review all the free motion steps and watch it in slow-mo if you have those capabilities or just pause it in certain areas so that you can sew along if that's what you would like to do. So it's a really cool education site. If you've never joined us for a virtual event before, there's no time like the present. All right, I'm going to quickly go through and make sure that I have addressed any 
questions that have come through. I apologize for not doing a Q&A yet, but I had a lot to cover. All right. Jennifer says, I like that we can make anything anytime we want to. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Sulky. All right. Esther says, thanks for sharing. Looking forward to making the cape and also adding the pink ribbon embroidery to mastectomy pillows. That is a great idea. Love it. Esther says she has that Moda pomegranate fabric and it is beautiful. I love it. Oh, Mary Ellen. Mary Ellen was just on our craft tours trip. Good to see you. Uh, but what to use in the bobbin. Um, okay. I have to remember what we were talking about when you had this question. Uh, do you mean for the cape? For the cape, I used, for the top stitching, I used the 30 weight poly sparkle and I used the gold poly sparkle on the gold fabric and the red poly sparkle on the red fabric side. So I put the red poly sparkle in the bobbin. And since it is um, a polyester thread with just flecks of metallic running through it, I didn't have to do any crazy adjustments to my sewing machine. I could just sew it like it was regular polyester, a little bit thicker than our 40 weight poly deco, but still sews just as smoothly. It's really great. As long as your needle is big enough to accommodate the thread thickness, you need that 9014 needle, you can use it in the bobbin as well. So I don't know if that's what you were talking about. Let me know if you had a different bobbin question. <laughs> oh, maybe we're talking about the free motion embroidery, the free motion embroidery, what you, what we're using in the bobbin. So for the free motion, I had the 12 weight thread in the top. And then I used the 50 weight cotton that we used for constructing this in the bobbin during the free motion embroidery. That way I got a really nice balanced stitch. You cannot see the bobbin thread really at all um, for the free motion. So make sure to register for that video cast. I'm going to give you all the tips for making sure you're setting up your sewing machine for success. All right. Brenda has not used the stick and stitch yet. Brenda. You are going to love it. Lives will be changed. <laughs> I'm serious. Um, it is the easiest way to transfer a design or a pattern um, and follow it and not have, ha not have to remove any ink or anything like this because you're just going to wash it away once your embroidery is complete. All right. Great. Mary Ellen is registered and kit is ordered. I will see you then. Yes, I'm so excited that you joined me here today. I hope you had a great time on our Europe trip. Um, we missed you in Tuscany, but um, it was great to meet you in person. And I'm so glad to see your face today. All right. Lori says, do you still get the free pattern if you're just watching live and not registered? Um, so Lori, during our virtual events, you actually have to be registered if you're watching live. Um, you have to register for that one in order to view it in your personal library. So there's no option to watch it without being registered. So once you register, yes, you will get the freebie. It's available on the event page. So after registering, you can navigate to that event page in your library and scroll down. It'll say, get your freebie. And there will be a picture of that uh, Merry Christmas spoolie design. You can either click on the picture or click on the little border that says get your freebie, it says something like that, um, and it'll start downloading it right to your computer. So whether you watch live or watch on demand or watch in two months, um, you'll still get that freebie design as a thank you just for registering for the video cast. All right, so I don't know if I have... Uh, addressed all of the questions for today. So if I did not get to your question and you need an answer to a project or product question, please email us at info at sulky.com. We are always here with our amazing customer support team to answer all of your questions and make sure that you are satisfied with your Sulky products. Um, even if you have a sewing question that might not even relate to Sulky products, shoot us an email 
and we would love to help you work through it. We are really passionate about making sure that you have a great experience at the sewing machine. So join me next week for another So What, followed by our Tinsel and Trimmings video cast. So next week is a big week where we are going to sew a lot and sew together and come together on our So What community. Um, Erlene is saying, where do we register for it? All right, so you can either head right to sewingonline.sulky.com, find it in our education offerings, or I linked directly to registering it in the registering for it in the description of today's post. So if you're not seeing a link for Tinsel and Trimmings video cast, be sure to hit the little see more button on the description of today's post right below me here where, where I'm talking. Hit the see more button. The whole post will pop out and you'll see links for everything that I talked about today. You'll find a link to the blog post where the cape instructions are, a link to another fun costume post. You'll find links to all the products I discussed today, links to the tin tinsel and trimmings video cast and the kit. So you should be all set once you uh, hit that little see more button. All right. Good to see you too, Betsy. And I can't wait to see you all next week for another So What, as well as for the Tinsel and Trimmings video cast. So thank you very much for your time today. Have a great day sewing. I hope you are inspired to head on over to our Beat Cancer Shop as well and support all of the ladies and gents who are affected by breast cancer. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you next week.